and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought we'd do something a little bit different and do a get ready with me. Um, I'm off out tonight for a meal with a friend and it's not very often that I get a chance to go out and kind of do full face makeup. Um, I tend to on a day to day basis only do eye and maybe a bit of a lip. Um, I don't tend to do foundation and everything else, but when I'm going out for a night out, I like to kind of full face it and kind of smack that shit on there. So today I thought we'd do a little bit of a get ready with me. So uh, let's get started. Okay, to start off, we're going to prime my face. I'm going to use the Pore Professional Pro Balm to minimize the appearance of pores by Benefit. This stuff is amazing, it's great at making your face look really matte if you have really quite oily skin like I do. So I take quite a good amount of that, mix it on my fingers and then mix it in all over my face. I really wish I could have music on these videos but YouTube has a policy where uh, if you haven't got permission from the artist, you can't really use their music, which is 100% understandable, but also means that I have to uh, do most of these videos without music, and that makes me very sad. I also don't really like to get ready without music either, because I quite like to dance and stuff whilst I'm getting ready, but um, we will have to make do, I'm afraid, with my, with my very annoying voice today. <laughs> so um, once I've primed my face, I then go ahead and prime my eyelids as well. I'm using Urban Decay's Primer Eyeshadow. This is the anti-aging version. This is my favourite eyeshadow primer of all time, as you probably already know. Now I'm going to take some of this eyeshadow primer, I'm actually going to apply it just to the ends of my eyebrows. The reason being, I went and got my eyebrows done, and they're a little smidge... This one here is shorter than this one which annoys me. So I've had to be uh, drawing on the ends of my eyebrow, um, which is not something I've ever had to do before because I'm sure if you've seen my past videos, I am an extremely eyebrowy person. <laughs> I've basically got a mono brow. So I've got a lot of eyebrow, really. So I've never had to draw on my eyebrows. So I've had to start doing that, which has been a bit of a challenge. Um, but I will, I will persevere. Okay, up next is foundation. Um, I'm in between shades at the moment because I have a winter shade and a summer shade. Obviously, darker in summer, lighter in winter. Right now I'm between those shades because I went away on holiday during winter, got nice and dark, came back, haven't really been outside much, but I'm still in between my shades. Um, so my winter shade is 6.5 by Urban Decay. This is their Naked Skin Weightless Ultra Definition Liquid Foundation. I love this stuff. I don't really go for like super, super full coverage. Um, I like to have kind of like a medium-ish coverage. Um, and my summer colour is the number 8 by Urban Decay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix these two together on my little hand. And I'm going to mix them and then put them all over my face. Okay, so I've mixed them on my hand. As you can see, they are sort of running off a smidgy bit. So I'm going to take a damp beauty blender, just put it in some water, dab it into the little mixture I've got going on, and then pop that all over my face. One of the uh, kind of downsides to being very much mixed race is uh, the fact that you can never find a foundation that actually matches your skin tone. I've been very lucky in finding Urban Decay because it is the closest I've ever found to actually my natural skin tone. I will apologise if my voice is a bit funny. I seem to be coming down with yet another cold. I think since I've come back from being away and come home, I think I've had about six or seven colds since coming home, which is never attractive, no one really wants that, but that's kind of what I've ended up with, and I kind of woke up this morning with yet another cold, which is not going to bode well for me going out and having a good time this evening, but 
I am very much looking forward to going out and doing something a little bit different. I usually just stay in my house. <laughs> I'm a bit of a house mouse. I don't tend to go anywhere or do anything. Just sort of linger here. Stalking people on Instagram and Snapchat, you know, the usual. <laughs> and I'm going to take this foundation I'm just going to tap it up here as well. I have a lot of broken veins across my face, which I will cover with concealer in a second. I also have a few spots that have decided just to pop up today and ruin my life, because why not? An important thing to do when you're applying foundation is don't forget to put it down your neck, because there is nothing worse than seeing like a pure line from, in my case, chin number one, chin number two, and possibly whatever chin 2.5 is, and then my neck. So, um, I like to just remember to blend, 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 blend into your neck and behind your ears, because you don't really just want to be like, and then everything else is kind of, meh. So, remember to blend behind your ears and down your neck. So for concealer, I'm going to use the Boing Concealer, which is by Benefit. This stuff is great. I'm so glad that I discovered it accidentally. <laughs> it's really, really good for getting all the bits that you don't want and covering them up. I'm just gonna take a little brush and do down the middle of my nose. That spot there, which upsets me. That little one there. This one above my eyebrow. Bags under my eyes. All across here. Because I have lots of discoloration due to my PCOS. Messing with my hormones because that's what everybody loves. Everybody loves to feel super unattractive. Whoop whoop. So yeah, concealer there, concealer there. I don't know why I didn't just put concealer all over my face to be perfectly honest. I mean, conceal my whole face and maybe I won't be out there giving people nightmares. So now that I've concealed my face, I'm going to get that damp beauty blender again. It doesn't matter if it's still got product on it and you're just going to, again, dab, don't smear, don't... Don't do anything like wipey wise. Just take that beauty blender and dab. It's okay if you pull ridiculous faces. I too pull ridiculous faces when I'm doing this. Next we're going to do something called baking. It's when you basically put a whole heap of powder all over certain areas of your face rather dramatically and it helps to kind of lock in your foundation keep it from moving about too much. The powder kind of sets basically your makeup. That's why it's called baking. It's like baking a cake. If you want your cake to look beautiful, you put it in the oven and you bake it. So I want my cake to look beautiful, so I'm gonna bake it. Um, what I'm gonna use is some of L'Oreal's True Match Mineral Powder. And I'm gonna grab a beauty blender and I'm just going to take that beauty blender, might even dampen it just a smidge just so that product stays on there. So dampen it, put it inside, whoop, whoop. Get, its little, get its little booty in there. And I'm going to just put the powder underneath my eyes, which is also a great way of catching any eyeshadow. So if you've got, if you're doing like, I, I'm hoping to go for quite a dramatic look. I always sort of start off going, I'm going to go really natural. And then ending up looking like I quite possibly went to a unicorn's house, said, paint me like one of your French girls. And that's how I've, I've ended up. But, um, so if you're going for quite dramatic looks or looks which have a lot of different eyeshadows in, um, you don't want a lot of fallout ending up on your cheeks and ruining your foundation. So baking is a perfect way to catch all that excess powder. So you just dab it on there. So okay if you look like an idiot, that's the idea. Just dab it on there. We'll catch some of this fallout. You can dab it around other parts of your face as well, just to lock in that foundation. Because afterwards I will be contouring and highlighting and all that jazz. So now I look like a cake, or at least I look like someone who's baked a cake because there is flour 
all over my face. So that's going to leave that on whilst we now get on to doing the eyes. Okay, so now I'm going to make a start on my eyes. I'm going to use the Violet Voss and Laura Lee Collab palette. It's a great palette to use because it's got some fantastic neutral shades, which are great for doing transition colours on your eyelids. Um, I've got quite hooded eyes, so I like to try and make them look a little bit bigger using the optical illusion of eyeshadow. So I'm going to start off with a shade called Basic. I'm using my Smith 230 fluffy blending brush. It is amazing. It is my favorite blending brush of all time. Super expensive, super expensive, but totally worth it because I do love it. So I'm going to take the shade Basic, which is this pale shade here. I'm just going to put that all over the lid for now. I like to use lighter shades on my lid just to kind of take out even more of the pigmentation that I naturally have so that the colours that I choose really pop. I'm going to take Pris Pot. I'm just going to apply that to this outer corner of my crease. Next I'm going to take Britches, which is this kind of taupe shade here. Again, just starting out in the outer corner and blending it to the inner corner. I always start with my darker colours, like I always start with the colours on the outside and then work them in because if they turn out it, like quite dark then it's better to have the dark colours on the outer corner of your eye than the inner corner of your eye so that you want to make your eyes look bigger. Next I'm going to take Mama Bird up here, again just outer corner in that little crease there and kind of smudging it out. It's great to build up your shadows because it really can completely change sort of the depth of your look and really change how your eye shape looks. Then I'm going to take some of Fried and just apply that there. Next we're going to take some of Alabama and put that up here. Then I'm going to take some of Whiskers, this kind of dark brownie shade. See again, that's quite a lot of colour. So I just want to gently flick it out and round. Okay, so that's it for building up the shape of the eyes with the depth and the definitions with all those kind of nude brownie shades. Next I'm going to go in with my main colour for the evening which is going to be this gorgeous red shade. It's from the Love Sick stack by Melt um, and I, lo I love their stacks because they're magnetic and they just kind of clip together so you never sort of lose them which is wonderful and the shade I'm going to use um, is actually Love Sick and it's this gorgeous dark red. Oh, oh, I love that. So I'm feeling this today so I'm going to put that all over the lid. I'm going to take the Furless PM2, which is a flat shadow brush. I'm going to use that to apply the shadow all over the lid. Okay, so now both eyes are done. I've got that gorgeous red on there. And uh, next, I think I'm going to take the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. And I'm going to take some of the colours from there just to build up that shadow around the gorgeous lovesick that I already have on there. This palette has some amazing colours in it. Um, so I'm going to be taking some of the reds and just kind of building them up around Lovesick. So I'm going to take a bit of red ochre first, which is kind of a, I'd say reddish brown, and just put that around the outer edge. I kind of want a dark red-ish look <laughs> for tonight. I'm next going to add in some of Love Letter. So I used Red Ochre before, now I'm going to use Love Letter, just for that hint of a bright, brighter pink, 
just right here. Okay, so I think I want to make this look even more smoky looking and a little bit darker. Again, like I said, I always start with a plan of I'm going to look normal and natural and then I kind of, I don't know, I, I just have to dramatise everything really. So I'm going to take the Kat Von D Shade and Light Brush, eyeshadow brush, which is a fantastic little brush, it's dual ended. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to dip the finer end into Lou out of the Violet Voss Laura Lee palette. Just dip it in a little bit. It's a very pigmented black so wish me luck. I'm going to take up this and I'm going to just dot it right there. Just there. I'm going to take the fluffier end and I'm just going to buff it out. So that's the black applied to both eyes. They're looking a lot more smoky now. Um, and then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of uh, sparkle to them. So I'm going to use the Kat Von D Crushed Metal, or Metal Crush, sorry, eyeshadow in Raw Power. It's this gorgeous coppery dark red that I think will complement the red of Lovesick quite well. So I'm going to just apply that over the top of Lovesick with the same Furless PM2 that I used earlier. I'm just going to pat this on. I'm not going to stroke it across the eye, just patting it on. Okay, so now the eyes are looking a little bit darker and I am loving it. So next we're going to sweep away all of this bake and then I'm going to put on some eyeliner. I'm going to do my eyebrows and then we might do something underneath the eyes. <gasps> yeah, we never know. So let's first of all get rid of this um, bake that I've got on my face. So I'm going to take one of my fluffy Morphe brushes. This one doesn't have a number, it came in a kit. And we're just going to gently sweep away from the face. So you literally just do these flicking motions away from the face. Okay, so now we've just stuffed all of the bake off our face. Next I'm going to do um, some eyeliner. Now, I'm stuck. I either want to do an ombre eyeliner, going from black to red, to, opposed to the black to red I've got going on here, do it the opposite way, or do I just want to go plain black? Do I just want to... Oh, I just don't know. Um, I think I'm going to stay to just plain black for today. Um, <laughs> as much as I think I want to be adventurous, I better not. <laughs> I don't want to keep you guys here all day getting ready with me. Um, so I'm going to use the Morphe Gel Liner in Slate. It's my favourite gel liner to use so far. Um, and I'm going to use my Furless PM1, which is an angled liner brush. And we're going to do a little prayer to the gods of eyeliner that I don't screw this up. So that's one wing down, let's do this other one. <laughs> okay, so that's both wings done. Um, I wouldn't say they're symmetrical, but they're about as good as they're gonna get. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some concealer and just go along the very wing tip, just to clean up anything that isn't like perfect, because I have issues with stuff being not being perfect. So taking the same concealer as before, boing, by Benefit. Just 
taking my brush very carefully going along the wing line this can also help your wing like really stand out and look really clean okay so I'm going to take my angled liner brush with a bit of the gel liner on it I'm just going to bring that down just to my lower lash line about halfway across my eye I find that by doing this my eyes look a little bit rounder and a little bit more defined don't know if you can see the difference So taking the Kat Von D Light and Shade brush again, taking Lou again from the Violet Boss Laura Lee palette and just gently smudging this underneath. To give it a more smoky look, a little bit less harsh. What I'm going to do next is take some more of that Kat Von D Metal Crush Eyeshadow in Raw Power and I'm going to take the same brush as I used before on it, the Furless PM2. I'm just going to put it on the inner corner just to the middle bit where that black is. Just for a bit of red shimmer. Blend it in with that black. So next I'm going to put some mascara on. I'm going to use Benefit's Their Real Mascara. It is my favourite mascara to use. I actually need to get some more of this kind of because I'm running pretty low. So I'm going to put this on just my top lashes for now. Because I'm going to wear some false lashes to go out with tonight. And I always like to do my top lashes first. Then put on false lashes then do my bottom lashes just in case I poke myself in the eye and I make my eye water and then it ruins all the mascara on my bottom lash so I just do the top lash first okay so that's the mascara done Doo -doo -doo. Um, so whilst the mascara is drying I am going to fill in my eyebrows like I said I've not done this very many times so I'm by no means you know an expert at this I've never had to do it before because my eyebrows are usually just so bushy and big and ridiculous really so I'm going to uh, use Anastasia Beverly Hills brow definer in ebony and I'm just literally going to put the tail ends of my eyebrows back in um, excuse me whilst I move a little bit I have to sit on the floor to kind of do these tutorials and things and film because I don't have a film room yet one day hopefully possibly so um for now you just have to kind of put up with me looking ridiculous on the floor and I was just getting a cramp in my foot so I had to move a little bit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this um brow wiz and I'm going to fill in the ends of my eyebrow because as you can see a little too short your eyebrows should probably go from the bottom of your eye and you kind of go up an angle so really they should have stopped there so I'm like a smidge too short for my liking for my liking this is literally just my liking so what I'd like to do first is I like to brush them out with the brush end kind of get them into a sort of order So first of all I like to just brush them out to get them in some form of acceptable order. Then I take the end of the brow wiz and I just literally follow my natural line.
So now I've got my eyebrows done and I've used concealer to try and make them look a little bit neater. Again, I'm not great at doing them. Um, I am going to use NYX's Control Freak Eyebrow Gel. I'm just going to put a small amount of that all over my eyebrows. I don't know what the lighting situation is like in here right now. I think it, I mean, I think it's looking pretty good. But outside my window right now, it's all of a sudden gone very, very dark grey. And it looks like it's going to either start raining or snowing. Which, seeing as it's like it's meant to be summer, I really would rather it wasn't either of them. But if I was going to do one or the other, I hope that it's just going to to rain a little, not snow or hail, because I don't enjoy that. So the eyebrow gel is really good because if you've got kind of crazy eyebrows like I do, that decide to have a life of their own, meander off on you. It's really good just to hold it in place and make the lines look a little bit neater. Dashes. Okay, so I've chosen Dose of Colours Showstopper Lashes to wear this evening because as the name suggests, they are pretty showstopping. They're very, very beautiful. They come in the fantastically gorgeous packaging that you saw just now. I love Dose of Colours packaging. It's so bright and fun and I love it. Um, so I'm going to take Dose of Colours Showstoppers. They come in this beautiful little packaging like so. And they come in like this. And I haven't had a chance to wear them yet, so tonight's going to be the night to break these babies in, if I can get them on. Now this is going to be very amusing for all of you. I was tempted to do this off camera, but I will attempt to do it on camera. And... Um, try and get these lashes on so take them out of the packaging um, my favorite lash glue to use is by kiss and it's their strip lash adhesive because it's latex free i'm actually allergic to latex it's why i can't do a lot of like special effects stuff i wish i could and i really would love to but um due to my latex aller allergy allergy i can't even speak now uh, due to my latex allergy i do have a problem um, trying to find lots of fun stuff that I could do for maybe Halloween and things. But um, yeah, so this lash glue is latex free and it's odour free and it's great and it's the best lash glue I've found so far. So I'm going to take these little showstoppers. Just take them out of the packaging. I like to try and wheedle off some of the goo that already has comes with them to stick them to the packaging. Oof, these are going to be crazy. Right, best thing to do with lashes, I always find if you've never worn them before, fake lashes or the particular lash pair that you're going to put on, is just to have a little trial run before you put the glue on so you kind of know what placement you're kind of going for. These lashes are ridiculous. Oh, lordy, look at them. Okay, so I roughly know where I want to put them. Shake, 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 shake the glue. Shaking the glue. Um... And then just apply a thin layer of this all the way along the lash band. So now we're going to wait approximately 10 to 15 seconds for this to dry and then I will try and put it on my eye. Okay, that's looking good to me. Whew. Moment of truth, can I put this on whilst on camera and not look like an idiot? Probably not, but we're going to give it a go. I find it easier just to use my fingers to put these on rather than, I know like some people are like crazy talented and they've got tweezers out and they're like, ah, look at me, I'm amazing. Uh, I'm not amazing. <laughs> I just use my fingies and I like to pinch it to my natural lashes just to make sure that it's on there good and proper. Then occasionally I grab my eyelash tweezers and kind of go in there and pinch down the lash line to make sure it's properly 
adhered. Ooh, hello. They are very beautiful. I am rather in love with these. Okay, so that's one pair on. Looking good. So I'm going to do the other pair off camera. Now that you've seen me put one pair on, I will do the other pair off camera and then I'll be right back. So that's the lower lashes done. Now we're going to contour and highlight the face. So for contour, I am going to use my Anastasia Beverly Hills Contour Kit. This is the powder version. I am hopefully going to get the cream contour at some point. I think it will probably work better for me. I think I'd probably be able to use it a bit better and then just put the powder on over the top. Uh, same as I, how I do my foundation and everything. Um, but fingers crossed I can get that at some point. But this is what the palette looks like. And I'm just going to use the darker shade and just lightly go, so they say not to suck in your cheeks, but I suck in my cheeks when I do this. So I suck in my cheeks a little bit and then I go from the top all the way down. I have quite a natural shadow anyway from having quite high cheekbones. Thank you, Nana. And then I just kind of work with that and kind of blend. People always forget to go up into their hairline, always go up into your hairline because your face isn't just here, your whole face. I like to kind of do my my chin, my first chin, not my second chin or my 2.5 chin, but just my first chin I like to contour a little. I like to contour my nose. I've got quite a small nose anyway, thankfully, um, from my mother's side. So I just like to lightly contour that and bring it up into the brow bone. Just to make it look like I've got a super duper cute petite nose. And then just a little bit around the hairline. I'm using the Smith 124 to contour. I should have probably mentioned that before. Again, it's a really great brush. It's angled, so it's really good for when you want to contour your nose. And if you've already got quite high cheekbones like me, it's really good for, for that as well. Okay, for highlight, I'm going to use the Anastasia Beverly Hills Glow Kit in Sun Dipped. Um, and I'm going to highlight the high points of my face, so my nose, my cheeks um, and just underneath my brow bone and probably my cupid's bow as well. Um, I like to kind of mix and match them when I'm doing them. So for my brow bone and my cupid's bow I'm probably going to use Summer which is the lightest shade in there. I really need to get a smaller fan brush for doing my brow bone. It would make blending a lot easier. <laughs> Now to do my cheeks and my nose, I think I'm going to use Moonstone, which is the second lightest one in the palette.
And now to do my nose. I actually think I'm going to use tourmaline. I think that's how you pronounce it. Probably not. But tourmaline, which is the third shade in here. Again, it's a little bit darker than the other two. And just use that for my nose. And for a smidgy pidge just above my brow bone, I'm going to use bronzed, which is the darkest shade in here. I just want to put a little bit there. Right, I always do my lipstick last after I've already got dressed and done my hair. So I'm going to go away and do that off camera and then I'll be right back to show you the finished look. Ta-da! This is the finished look. So hair all done, dress on, little dingly dangly necklace on, lips done. So yeah, this is the finished look. Thank you so much for getting ready with me tonight. The last thing I need to do is apply some perfume. So I'm going to spray on Riri by Rihanna. It's one of my favourite ones. I do love... Oof! Sweet scented perfumes. So that's the last thing. Thank you so much for getting ready with me this evening. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please give it a thumbs up. Maybe leave me a comment in the comment section below. Um, hopefully I will see you again very soon. Thank you again so much for watching. And if you want to see more of me, then please subscribe. And uh, I hope to see you again really soon. So bye.